Of course there's an SDK for that. Working with something like WebEx Teams and as powerful as that API as it is, uh, there's a very high chance there's going to be a software development kit for whatever Python library or whatever Cisco platform you're going to be working with is. And WebEx Teams isn't the exception. So if we're going to get started with the WebEx Teams SDK, what do we do to install it? We use pip. So if I do pip install WebEx Teams SDK, there we go. We have successfully installed WebEx Teams SDK and we are ready to jump into it and see how this thing works. So with that installed, what is our next step when we're talking about an SDK? It's explore the documentation. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check out webexteamssdk.readthedocs.io uh, just to see what you can do to get started. Of course, there is a quick start that's going to show you how you can quickly get started with your code. But that is what this nugget is for after all, isn't it? So let me bring up VS Code and I'll show you exactly what we can do to get started with the Webex Teams SDK. Here it is. Of course, this code is available on GitHub and this is what we are looking to do. So from the Webex Teams SDK that we just installed, we'll be importing the Webex Teams API class. You can see the class here uh, specifies a bunch of things that we can do to instantiate that class. But really, what we need to do to instantiate that class is do nothing more than give it our access token. So let me just jump back to this particular script and make sure I've got the most up-to-date access token here. There we go. So once this class has been instantiated, it's going to store it in an object here that I've created called API. And working with the WebEx Teams SDK is just like working with any other SDK. You simply type the object itself, press period, and you can see all of the different modules that are available to you. So for instance, if I'm picking on people, like I want to see the people that I'm working with, I can then press period again, and I can see all of the methods that are available to me. Create is going to create a user within WebEx Teams. Delete deletes that user. Get just gets info on that user. List lists out every single user. Me is it gets info on me. And update updates the info on it. These methods are almost identical to the met from one module to the next. So if you were typing in teams or rooms, you'd see create, delete, get list. There probably won't be a me and update. And just to show it off, here's what the code is doing. I am getting a list of all of the teams, but here's the real kicker. The teams that are returned to me here are not a JSON body team. The teams that are returned in this SDK is an actual team class object. So the way we get attributes from an individual class is a couple different ways. We can either use the get attribute method, specify the object we're working on, and then the attribute itself. So in this case, I'm saying if the name attribute of the team is not equal to CBT nuggets, then create the team. So this block will be creating the team based on the results of this get attribute method. And this is one of the ways that we can parse out attributes from a team class. But the other ways we can just use decimal notation. So in the instance that this team name of CBT team does exist, uh, it's just going to get the team ID and store it in a team ID object. The people section does just what you think it does. Here I'm going to be printing out uh, the details on just me as well as a list of all of the people. And I'm even going to create someone here. If I hover over the create method, you can see what is required is the email address. Now the other items have a default value set to none, so they aren't required but I'm setting them anyways just for good measure. So in this case, uh, I'm creating an account for Ben. I'm spe specifying his display name, first name, last name, and then I even specified a role of administrator. How did I get this particular ID field? Well, of course, from the roles module by just listing out the roles and then printing out the roles that are available to me. I have, of course, the rooms list that's available to me. I'm gonna grab a list of all of the rooms, but here's the thing, there's nothing stopping our code from creating multiple rooms called CBT room. It will absolutely allow you to create rooms that all have the same name because under the hood, they're getting unique IDs. So what I'm doing here to figure out whether or not I should create a room called CBT room, I don't want to create one if one already exists, right? I'm specifying a default object called evaluator here, and I'm setting it to false. So I iterate over all of the lists of rooms, and if any of them 
does have the title of CBT room, I change that value to true. So if I go through all of the list of rooms and it doesn't find one with the name CBT room, evaluator will remain false. And in that case, this evaluator, if evaluator is false, it goes ahead and it creates the room. Otherwise, if it does find a room called title, it sets the evaluator to true, and then it gets that ID and stores it in the room ID object. That way, we can create a message here that posts to the room that says posted from the SDK. So if I save the script and debug it, let's just jump back into WebEx Teams, and there it is, posted from the SDK. You can see just how much easier it is to work with an SDK because all we have to do is simply call the API object, then the module, then the method that we're trying to work on. So that's been using the WebEx Teams SDK. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.